Hey everyone, Rascal here. And Mama. Welcome to our podcast. This week we're covering movies that critics hate, but we love. Starting off, we're talking about the DC movie from 2004, Catwoman, starring Halle Berry as the title character. Yes, now, because we thought the movie was great. Was it fantastic? No. Mm -hmm. Was it earth-shattering? No. But we thought Halle Berry did a great job doing her version of Catwoman with a whole different plot line and storyline, and the um, outcome was something different from any other movie that had Catwoman in it, and the, I'm sorry, the handsome Benjamin Bratt played in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when we, when we, when this fir movie first came out, I didn't, I didn't watch it at all, so it was 2004. Yes. I was, I've awesome. seen it. Yeah. And actually, um, our uncle bought it. Uh -huh. And yes, it's because of Halle Berry. But <laughs> he bought it, and we got. I got to see it first, and I remember reading all the critics saying it was the worst movie, one of the worst movies of all time. How she got a Razzie and all this. So I said, you know, let me see the movie. And I saw the movie, and I'm like, this movie isn't bad. She looks gorgeous, by the way. Mm -hmm. She looks fantastic. And, again, it was a different take, and it was her interpretation of the character. Mm -hmm. And I think people forget that each actress that does this role, you go through uh, Lee Merriweather, you go through uh, Eartha Kitt, uh, Anne Hathaway, uh, there's, there's like several. Halle Berry, Michelle Pfeiffer, and the uh, the favorite Catwoman. Uh, who is it? Uh, Lee... Which, no, not Lee Merriweather. I see her face. She used to be a model. She's still living now, and she was in the last bat, um, the first animated Batman reboot with Adam West. Yeah, that's the uh, Julie Bert Newmar, Moore. right? Yes, thank you. Yeah, we just had a moment. Julie Newmar. Each one of these ladies did a different interpretation of Catwoman. Every single performance is different. None of them are the same. So hers was just a different way of how she interpreted the character to be. So, I like the interpretation. It was different. Yeah. It was fun on some counts. And then it had a storyline that was more for modern day, you know, with Sharon Stone being the villain. Uh -huh. And we know if you haven't seen it, you uh, it's way too far ago to, for spoilers. Right. And she was the villain. And it was a beauty scandal. Yeah. With, you know, murder and intrigue. Yeah. That fit for modern times. Right. So now everything has to be exponentially layered in detail. You got to have further, deeper meanings and plots. You can't just have a standard one anymore. People want to have layers to a movie now. And there's things they can take apart from it. Right. And from the box office, it was $100 million for the budget. It didn't even make that back. It only made... 82.1 million. It made close to all the money back, yes. Yeah. But here is what the problem for me was with so many people ragging on this video, especially women. When this happened, this studio said that they would never, ever take another chance on a female lead in a DC animated character live action movie. Yeah. And it's like, are you people thinking of how this is going to affect what we get to see? So that was 2004. It's now 2019. And it took Wonder Woman and another 13 years before they decide to take a chance right. on another woman. So and now, they, now they're doing Birds of Prey and these other characters. Now they want to do it. Now that Wonder Woman was a success, they're like, okay, we can do it again. It's like this thing that was like... Uh, embarrassment for their studio. So what you have to remember is you may not like this movie, you may hate this movie, but Catwoman and Halle Berry made the way for Wonder Woman. It may have taken 13 years, mm -hmm. but she was the first one for them to take a chance on. And, and it took another 13 years to do it again, but mm -hmm. she is her predecessor, mm -hmm. however you look at it. Right. They did have a video game. Yes, the Catwoman video game, and not sure how that did... But we do own it. It's somewhere in the house. And it's a tough game. It's not easy. Yeah, because yeah. there's a really a lot of 
There's a lot of levels. You have to really think how to get your way around everything. You're not just blindly going in and, and you just get lucky and you find the way out. You really have to think about how to get out of places or save people. Mm -hmm. And the director even looked at the Catwoman in the comics and, you know, to make sure that he, one, didn't stray from what Catwoman was, but still putting his own spin on it and not making it look like every other movie out there with a male lead or just every movie. And the director, uh, I think it was Pitoff, I think? I yes. Think? Uh -huh. Okay. And he quoted. And I checked out some to see how Catwoman was treated in the comics to make sure that Catwoman was in the same vein, but I didn't want to be too influenced by the comic book because the whole point of the movie is to be a first... First to be a movie and to be different. Different from Batman, different from Spider-Man, this movie has its own identity. I try to find my sources more in the character of Catwoman herself. To me, the Catwoman we're filming now with Halle Berry is in the continuity of the others. She's different than Michelle Pfeiffer's character, different from anybody who's played Catwoman exactly. in the past. But she is Catwoman. When you look at the difference between the comic book Catwoman and the TV or movie Catwoman, mm -hmm. they're all different. But there's exactly. a feeling that they're all Catwoman. Halle brings her own personality through her attitude and through the outfit. Exactly. And that's the whole point. Exactly. And to me, and this is Mama's comment, has nothing to do with Rascal. I think it was a lot more and a lot deeper than just, oh, I didn't like her performance. And I don't know what it was. Maybe it's because it was the first woman in a movie mm -hmm. and uh, in a live action superhero movie, DC, mm -hmm. that they didn't like. Let me make sure of that because before her, uh, well, she was a, more of a villainess. Yeah. She was like on the border. Yeah. Because before yeah. that, I take that back, before that, there was Supergirl. Yeah, the, yeah, the movie. Supergirl. Yeah, the movie. Yeah, right. Back in the '90s, so she literally was the first female DC one, Supergirl. Right. And then look how long they waited for that movie to have Catwoman. Right. And then look how long they waited from that movie to have Wonder Woman. Who knows? We should we'll be, be the telling them why are you waiting this long for the female superheroes? You got the males out all the time. Not cool. Think about the time periods. Look it up yourself on Wikipedia. There was over 10 years from Supergirl to Catwoman. Over 10 years from Catwoman to Wonder Woman. Mm. So it's like, you know, a period of over 30 years total. And you had three super female superhero movies from DC. Mm -hmm. So maybe we want to think next time, even if you may not love the movie, bashing it, destroying it, and just tearing it to pieces affects what we get yeah from the studios as movies and whom they allow to play characters that are out of the box including you know a multiverse and multi um multi-ethnic yeah. and diverse characters even lgbtq so right. we got to think about these things yeah it's like the same thing with uh voltron if you got so many people that don't like it Okay, but to harass people, get mad, destroy everything that made it great and say it was never good to begin with, then you ruin it for the people that did like Catwoman, that did like it, that did want to support it, and now they don't get a chance because mm -hmm. you destroyed everything and like you don't you wanna pretend it doesn't exist. Well there was even supposed to be an animated movie mm -hmm. tied into it, but it is so awful that they had to cancel it all together. Just like with Green Lantern failed miserably. Any animated stuff they have tied in, they gotta cancel because it's gonna get just as bad ratings as that. Now, that being said, it wasn't just Hallie that got worse everything. Sharon Stone was voted Worst Supporting Actress. Benjamin Bratt and Halle Berry were Worst Screen Couple. Uh, Lambert Wilson was Worst Actor. It was almost as if Worst Director, Pilaf, Worst Screenplay. It was as if this movie was scheduled. It was deemed and it was um, planned for it to fail and everyone be blacklisted. The movie's not that bad. If you haven't seen it, Take a look at it, and you will see that it's not horrible. Mm -hmm. It really isn't. It's a different interpretation of the character. Now, that being said, if you have seen it and you didn't like it, let us know why in the comments below constructively. Please don't use a bunch of expletives and curse words. Just let us know what for you made it a movie you didn't like. Yeah. And if you did see it and you did like it, then by all means, let us know in the comments right. as well why you liked it. 
and why you think that this character should get another chance right uh as a dc live action movie regardless of who plays her it doesn't have to be hallie it can be another actress that gives her interpretation as right. well another script so thank you for watching this podcast again we like the movie yes and and we always look for the positive. Even if mm -hmm. some things aren't the best things ever, they can still have some pretty good or decent ideas or writing or talent in any way. This is definitely one of them. Yes. So thank you so much for watching. Tune in tomorrow for another movie that critics can't stand, but we actually love. I'm Masculine Entertainment. And I'm Mom Entertainment. Have a tuntastic day. Peace. Meow. In the mountaintops, rivers, and streams. Working sunlight from the sky in my pocket. Give it to you later on in the form of a locket.